Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have some pretty, pretty kind of serious and big things coming out over here when it comes to the PlayStation, where it actually seems now that there's a big, big lawsuit coming out over here to, well, well, a PlayStation company. Now, it's been a little bit on the scary side, too, because this one in particular PlayStation company has been kind of, well, very, very well known, and a lot of drama throughout the years, and of course, one of the biggest gaming companies in the entire planet, aka known as Bungie, but now it seems like Sony's actually getting sued with, well, even more crazy stuff. Stuff going on. So we're going to talk about this, talk about the drama, talk about the legalities behind this too, and of course as well, I just want to kind of open up on this one because I feel like there's been a little bit of a Sony disconnect as a per recent. There's been a lot of kind of somewhat bad PR, bad things happening, and especially with Jim Ryan himself stepping down, things have been a little bit on the rockier side. So uh, I want to hear your thoughts and comments down below. Of course, always be respectful. We have the Twitter and Twitter down below in case you guys want to follow. We also have the Amazon links as well, and of course the Best Buy for the MetaQuest 3 pre-orders with a bunch of cool benefits linked down below. And let's dive into the video itself. So, first and foremost, if you guys can't go and tell, this video is going to be regards now to a brand new PlayStation subsidiary, aka Bungie, and if I put PlayStation, the title is, it is a PlayStation company as of right this second. But Bungie's been in a lot of big, hot heat these past few years. Number one is that PlayStation, or aka Bungie, had to go and deal do, do with a bunch of different lawsuits in regards to cheating companies, people installing hacks, and all of that. Like, a lot. We saw a lot of big drama. We saw a lot of big things going on with it. And, well, Bungie has been in, like, multiple different lawsuits. There was lawsuits on them basically having their own music stolen. Creators were basically harassed on that one. There was random people, like I said, trying to go and sell and kind of yoink up accounts. And even then, there's even more tied on in. But this one's even more on the crazy side because this is an employee that is now trying to go take out Bungie. Now, this is even scarier, too, because internal conflicts in companies are always very, very sketch, especially when it comes to HR, especially when it comes to people like kind of trying to go and sue companies and well these past few days we've seen a lot of drama in the gaming universe I made a video on this a few days ago or yesterday where even Ubisoft had a lot of kind of big claims against them we also saw other various companies such as like you know even Epic Games doing layoffs PlayStation also had layoffs too the gaming world right now has been sketchy in a very very weird spot and now this is where we have this where a former Bungie or like in theory like they were owned by PlayStation HR manager is suing for wrongful termination after she reported potential racial bias. She alleges her recommendations for sensitivity training were not uh, met with hostility and denial. Now, on a preemptive, whenever there's videos that kind of have like either like race or sexism or all this type of stuff and allegations and everything else, obviously, like I'm going to more just report on the news because it is important news going on in the gaming world and sphere. Uh, my opinions or my takes don't, you know, really matter too, too much. And of course, always be nice in the comments or like, you know, let me go and talk out. Uh, just like my little, I guess, preemptive disclaimer right there. But Desert 2 and Marathon developer Bungie is currently now being sued for retaliation and wrongful termination by a former HR manager who alleged she was was let go when she raised a potential case of racial discrimination to her supervisors. In a complaint filed earlier this year in the state of Washington, plaintiff Ingrid Alm uh, recounts that she was hired by Bungie of May of 2022 as an HR manager, coming to the job with over a decade of experience. Just a few months into her employment, she said she was instructed to investigate the performance of a particular employee referred to as James Smith. Uh, I'm assuming that might have just been like a, like a filler name, if anything. But when she sat down to speak with Smith, he allegedly pointed out that he was the only black employee on a team of 50 individuals, and especially he felt he was being singled out and racially targeted by his supervisor. Now, obviously, when it comes to like things, like I said, when it comes to racial stuff, etc., just always be polite in the com in the comment section down below. Some people get a little testy on that one, but just kind of reporting the news. Uh, but if, like, if all this stuff is all allegedly true and actually working out, and like uh, that's that's some crazy stuff. Uh, mainly the fact alone, too, because this also tied in with HR, and when HR is also involved into these situations, typically HR is the person in the company that goes by everything in the books. That's a big thing to go and note. Like, it's just big. I don't know. So, uh, Alum uh, goes on to say that she shared this information with her supervisor and recommended that Smith's supervisor receive diversity training, but alleges that her recommendation was met with hostility and denial. She says that she was told that the individuals she was recommending take the training had been there for a long time and are highly regarded, and her recommendation was denied. During a follow-up discussion about the incident sometime after, Anne was additionally told by her supervisor that she didn't want to touch those conversations with a 10-foot pole. Now, there's three different things on this. Uh, obviously, if some person is saying something uh, when it comes to them, like either being like racially profiled or like sexually profiled or whatever it might be, you should always take those concerns 
very seriously. That's a big thing. But one thing I always want to know, because I'm a skeptic, not to say it did not happen or is happening or whatever it might be, I just want to see if there's actually going to be proof regards to it. Because you can always have this conversation and say they might be singled out, but at the same time, it might be on the reverse, where they might be assuming that they are, but they might have had issues with their work or other stuff out there. But uh, to not go and completely sound horrible, on the reverse side, if these also same next step conversations saying that we don't want to touch these difficult conversations with a 10 foot pole or like these people have been there for a long time and they don't have to deal with this like sensitivity training or whatever that as well on the opposite side is also horrible and obviously when it comes to most of these types of stories it's always like um you know two lies and a truth always kind of blended in together that might not be the proper saying for it but obviously you want to have like the slack messages conversation email chains and all that type of stuff to go and see or record times and all of that or the various types of things that are kind of coming out and I'm only going to say this too as well, is because this is a big legal case when it comes to PlayStation, Bungie, etc. And you can't always either, number one, be making up allegations like this without really bad repercussions. And number two, if this also has happened into the company itself, that basically means that there is going to be a, well, that's bad. Like, that's horrible. You don't want to have someone racially profiled for on the team, especially if their work is fine or up to standards and all of that. So my kind of big, very middle ground fence sitting take, which I think for a situation like this, I should go and say this because we don't necessarily know exactly what, where, and why they might come out in actual legal documents. But this is one of those things where it can kind of go on either side. Because some, some of this, at least what I'm reading, is a little bit of he said, she said, and that's why you're in the legal battle to go and see. Although typically people don't go too much into the legal side unless they kind of realize that they have a good case or, well, there's actually like stuff for them to back it on up because you need to have proof and any lawyer would say that. So I actually go and say this recommendation that they had was denied during a follow-up discussion about some incident sometime after, Aim was initially told by her supervisor that she didn't want to touch this conversation, as we mentioned. Following this, Elm alleges that Bungie recommended terminating Smith's employment. Elm says she disagreed, saying this would be racially biased, and in September approached Bungie's Director of Equity and Inclusion, Dr. Courtney Benjamin, for advice. Benjamin suggested that terminated, uh, terminating Smith would be too risky, considering the evidence, and advised a written warning to be given to Smith and said. So basically, there is a little bit of a paper trail, as I'm talking about over here. We're just going to go and show that they're like literally trying to go escalate this, they're trying to make sure it's not racially profiled and all that. Although though AIM alleges that her supervisor became extremely angry at her for having reached out to Benjamin and gave her a written warning over email. AIM's supervisor also said Benjamin to apologize for AIM approaching her, supposedly telling Benjamin that she didn't want her to think that she was a racist. Later in September, AIM claims that she was placed in the needs improvement category during a review, despite previously having excellent reviews from both peers and clients, and was told by her supervisor to look for an off-ramp and exit from the job. Shortly after, AIM said she found her email and Bungie Plus platform access cut off without explanation and despite multiple attempts to contact her supervisor received no response for several days now this is like a lot of big things out here like a lot of big big issues a lot of big drama uh this is bad like if they also it seems like they do have a paper trail with it and this is just horrible for a company like Bungie who's always trying to go push a lot of inclusion because if you have this type of stuff going on with like, executives and higher ups when it comes to places like Bungie uh then that means all their kind of like morals their things they're pushing for etc are basically a blatant lie now like I said when it comes to race stuff I don't think I have much to go and say it's just a random generic white dude talk about games but if they actually have proper like proof and they've gone through all the proper protocols and etc etc like this seems like a really bad situation especially if they're now pushing for legal recourse when it comes to this. At the end of September, Anne was informed that her resignation has been accepted despite insisting that she had not intended to resign and wanted to keep her job. She says she declined to sign a document stating she voluntarily resigned and then an email was sent to the company's chief people officer, Holly Barkovri, explaining the situation when unanswered. So as of right now, we're seeing people getting called out for not even responding to this type of stuff, and this kind of pains me, because I've had really bad corporate things myself, where basically people go on power trips. Bunch responds to Ames complaint is brief, and does not include an alternate narrative of events to counter hers. Bungie instead either flatly denies at least all, almost every part of Elm's narrative without further context, or denies them with the statement that Bungie lacks knowledge or information significant uh, sufficient to form a belief as to the truth or falsity of the allegations. Bungie is represented by this case by Mary P Di Polano, a Fox Rothschild lawyer who professes expertise in getting wrongful termination lawsuits dismissed and developing strategies that serve my clients' financial goals and minimize cost. So they're basically suing them for retaliation and wrongful termination and asking for recourse in the form of lost past and future wages, damages for emotional distress and attorney fees, and they have a trial set for January 22nd, 2024. 
as well. That's kind of crazy too as well. Uh, like it's just nuts. Like this is kind of a big, big deal because this is like workplace basically like racism coming over here from PlayStation. And now obviously I'm one of those people I want to see all the information and facts. If there is a multi-step like thing for emails when it comes to terminations, uh, involuntary terminations when it comes to them trying to go escalate these issues and not having a chance to do anything, this is kind of what my feel like the job would be for an HR employee to make sure that their people are not being racially profiled or sexually profiled or whatever it might be, you know, for whatever color skin you have or whether like white or gender is. And like I said, I've always seen Bungie kind of push this idea narrative a lot that they're kind of accepting or kind of pushing this one. So it kind of completely takes away off this, depending on how the situation kind of goes. So it's kind of my little take on it. Hopefully I didn't go too hot or cold on this one too. But either way, racial stuff's always a little bit on the sketchy side to make videos on. But this is a bad situation to be in at the end of the day. Give me your thoughts and comments down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed. We have the Best Buy MetaQuest pre-orders. If you guys want to go check those on out, link down below for the how link in the description and comment section, the Twitter, Twitch stream, and of course, subscribe if you guys are new.